Good evening, and welcome to Have I Got News For You, and if you're watching the Saturday night repeat of this show, don't worry, the incident with the sheep has been edited out. <laughs> In the news this week, following its commitment to reduce spiralling costs, the BBC gets tough on office pilfering. <laughs> In deepest Africa, there's a brief sighting of Lord Lucan. And in Florida, there's concern about the bait being used in the Miami shark fishing competition. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team is an actor who recently sued for libel after being called a foul-mouthed juvenile with a limited command of language and won the case using the defense It's Bollocks. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight is a former talk show host who got fed up with the number of guests just coming on TV to plug their book, something which you can read all about in The Best of Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> it's Michael Parkinson. <laughs> Round one features the major news stories of the week, reduced to a few random clips nicked from ITN. Paul and Michael. Um, well, this is uh, number 10 Dan Street. This is Bill Clinton um, arriving. Um, sit there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they've had. Uh, he's addressing the um, the cabinet for the first time in a long time. An American president and has done that. Mm. This is Paula Jones, who's a young oh. lady who's uh, alleged sexual harassment by uh, President Clinton. Um, mm. She said that President uh, Clinton uh, asked her to go to a room where he was in a state of undress, she alleges, uh, mm -hmm. asked her to perform a, a, a sexual act. Yes. The, the, the lawyers think they've got a very good case because it's said that he can, she can identify the president's genitalia. <laughs> is, that, is that in a blindfold test? Yes. <laughs> well, it's a doorstep challenge. Yeah. <laughs> he does use it as a doorstep, apparently. <laughs> But he actually, uh, he claims that because there's no mention of oral sex uh, in the Bible, it's therefore not a sin. Is that a good defence, you think? I don't know. It means that fraud and parking on a double yellow line isn't a sin, either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what's he doing over... He claims that because oral sex isn't mentioned in the Bible, it's not a sin. That's what he said. It's yes. the same as his thing about not inhaling. Is it? <laughs> um, and what, is, what has Hillary been doing uh, whilst the... Chats she went with uh, uh, Cherie. Sherry. Sherry, yeah. Yes, to the uh, Globe Theatre. She went to see Shakespeare. She did. No, no she went to see one of his plays. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't returned his calls for some time now. <laughs> A hot foot from Amsterdam. Uh, Bill Clinton said his intention was to have fun in London, although a secret trip without Hillary to Madame Tussauds was cancelled when he found out it was just a waxworks museum. <laughs> Uh, Ian and Martin. I think this is about um, Tony Blair, who's hitting the ground, running all over the place. Oh, look, she's saying, fall over here. <laughs> A cup of tea, that's got the strychnine in it, that one. And there's J.R. Hartley. <laughs> He's found an old photo of himself. It's very encouraging. Yes. No, Blair, for some unknown reason, decided he would have a secret meeting with Mrs Thatcher and then tell everyone about it. He was asking her advice on Europe, borrowing an enormous handbag, presumably, <laughs> to go and swing at various foreign johnnies. Mm. But it's all changed. Yes. And he met Yeltsin, who loved him. Yeltsin said, you've got good eyes. <laughs> He made a rather amusing gaffe, in fact, Yeltsin. What he did said, he do? Well, he said that they were going to, the Russians were going to dismantle missiles targeted on uh, Europe. And everyone said, what missiles targeted <laughs> on Europe? <laughs> because there weren't supposed to be any anymore. And, uh, and why was uh, Healy, in fact, included in that uh, bit of film? Because Healy said the meeting with Thatcher was a publicity stunt. So he thought, if I appear on television and say it's a stunt, Everyone will think I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it is uh, Tony Blair's audience with uh, Margaret Thatcher. Uh, Lady Thatcher stayed at number 10 for longer than expected, 30 minutes for a chat and another two hours while security guards tried to prise her fingertips off the doorframe. <laughs>
Uh, Paul and Michael? Um, oh, yes, this is the new check-in for Manchester Airport. <laughs> <laughs> It's, swampy. Uh, there's Swampy having a good time. This is the, the uh, Terry Waite being shown the VIP lounge. Instead of that moving sort of pavement, you've got to get to your terminal <laughs> like this. <laughs> and that's being lowered out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> they can't afford those steps on wheels. <laughs> the, the visitors to the, to the Echo Warriors uh, camp there. Uh, Mr. Wait, I thought he wasn't let in, was he, for some reason? Yes, he went last week, he wouldn't let him in. He wouldn't let him in, mm, that's yeah. right. Thought he might be trouble. It's a go bother. He only has to chain himself to a radiator and he's there for years. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he does, he can't, he wasn't held, he just, it was just him being a nuisance. <laughs> so, you know, making polite gestures, oh, is that the time you're and you're, no, I'm all right here, thank you. <laughs> But they've thrown them all out now, haven't they? They have. Mm. Well, they're trying Swampy's to. camp was raided. It was not just his camp. They've been, um, they're, they're trying to evict all of them yes. from this camp. And there's, there's one tunnel, which I believe is called um, Sir Cliff Richard. <laughs> Sir Cliff Richard OBE. OBE. And the other tunnel's called Keith Richard. There's quite a lot of rivalry between the tunnels, though. Like, there's, uh, there's one person who said that in no way would they live in Sir Cliff Richard's passage, or whatever it's called. <laughs> But, uh, because it was unfit for human uh, habitation, and this is Delia Bastard of Cake Hole Tunnel. Are the Cake Hole Tunnels? Cake yeah. Hole Tunnel. Yeah. Other protesters are planning uh, to move on to a new project in London. They're going to stop the Jubilee Line extension by digging a huge tunnel between Waterloo and Greenwich. <laughs> and uh, finally, in this round, Ian and Martin, you may be some time. <laughs> Lady Explorers going to the South Pole. Um, and still going. Plenty of sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, well, good, good news for uh, Lady um, Explorers. <laughs> <laughs> the location isn't absolutely right, I have to say. Is it the North Pole? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what has the team been dubbed? Do you read that? The Ice Girls. Oh, very good, good. <laughs> yes, well done. Ooh, how, oh, yeah, I good. should work on a tabloid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, that's right. And where, 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 <laughs> where have they been trained to uh, fight off the polar bears? London Zoo. <laughs> Almost as ridiculous. Dartmoor, in fact. <laughs> and who are the real heroes in this story? The, uh, the helicopter pilots. Why is that? Because they flew the helicopters. <laughs> Is there anything particularly <laughs> heroic about that? Yes, they had to, they, they, there was a polar bear attacked the ice girls and the helicopter picked, a, there was a bloke lent out the helicopter, it came down, picked the polar bear up by the ears <laughs> and, and then flew 5,000 miles and dropped it over Wolverhampton. <laughs> <laughs> Made a hell of a mess of somebody's greenhouse. Yeah. Still managed to find his way back to Dartmoor though. Yeah, yeah and he ordered some martyrs. <laughs> mm. yeah, Natural is... enemy of the polar bear is a tomato plant. <laughs> The plant gets around the neck and starts to throttle them like that. You show me a tomato plant and I'll show you a polar bear that's shitting himself, I tell you. <laughs> they just don't like them. There's no oral sex mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> really, the case? No, Job. <laughs> Sorry. No, Job. That yeah, is terrible. <laughs> It was good. There. <laughs> I've, been, I've been trying to search for that joke for the last ten minutes. Hello, <laughs> Joe. Excellent. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome back. Yes. Uh, it is the first all-women expedition to the North Pole. One member of the team, Sarah Jones, recalls how she would wash by stripping off all her clothes and running naked into the snow. I would run to where the snow was powdery and rub my body all over with it. The video of the expedition will now be shown on the Fantasy Channel at 2 a.m. <laughs> Uh, so, at the end of that round, uh, both teams are on about as even a keel as keels get, tying as they are with four each. Mm. Before the oasis of round two, the blurred vision of our caption competition, Ian and Martin, Paul and Michael, get this to inspire them. And we'll be back to collect their thoughts after they've done the same. In round two this week, we reject the seedy, muck-ridden world of tabloid journalism and embrace the seedy, muck-ridden world of the TV chat show. <laughs> uh, 
What Happened First is the name of the game. Uh, two specially selected clips of talk show mayhem, but what happened first to cue the carnage? Are those experts in the ways of chat shows first? So, Ian and Martin, <laughs> uh, explain this one. It's Oliver Reed. <laughs> Can you give me some job music? <laughs> give me some job music. Can you give me some job music? I'll see you that does that. <laughs> Thirsty man. <clears throat> uh, You're asking what happened first? Yes, what happened to spark that off? Nobody Could hit a, him. A bottle of vodka. <laughs> 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 Finding himself on Pebble Mill. <laughs> <laughs> Scary enough. Yes. Saturday Night at the Mill, mm. as it was called. Well, I remember it. this program, yeah. He was did on a show, I did a radio show, I did it with Elaine Stritch, and he arrived in the studio absolutely stark naked, except for a pair of green Wellington boots. <laughs> and Elaine Stritch was in the middle of an anecdote, she turned around with perfect time and said, My dear Oliver and friend. <laughs> But you had a bit of a history with violent guests, didn't you? Oh, only one or two. I mean, there's that bloody bird. That was. <laughs> oh, you mean Helen Mirren? Lane Stritch. Is it true that you, you have your own chauffeur because you get so bored with taxi drivers asking you about that bloody bird? <laughs> yeah. You brought the bird with your gov. Yeah. Mm. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> really? Billy Connolly was on that show. It was the only good thing on that show. <laughs> and at the end of it, when we rolled the credit titles, the, the bird came back on and went for Billy Connolly, which is a terrible mistake. Oh, right. Uh, he doesn't even like people, never mind birds. And, <laughs> and this bird came out of the sky at him like this, and it got there, and Billy grabbed it. He said, I'll tell you what, Emu, he said, he said, you bite me, he said, I'll break your neck and his bloody arm. <laughs> Meanwhile, back Enough. at, uh, back <laughs> at Pebble Mill, let's have a look at it. You couldn't do, for example, my job because I've been reading words whirling around, lovely words about you, uh, <laughs> on what they call auto cue here. Um, but you couldn't do my job because you are dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the presenter there confusing the phrase dyslexic uh, and the phrase pissed as a fart. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Parky. Uh, you may not have caught this uh, particular political discussion. Yeah, <laughs> 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 One guy had a copy of Playboy. Was it the other guy's mother in the centrefold? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not actually. Uh, although Playboy is a clue. Was that? Was it Russian? That was it. It was Russian. It was Russian. Yes. Mm. Was they protesting about yeah. the sale of Playboy in in Russia? In, in Russia? Mm. Uh, no. The, another clue would be that it has something to do with you, the odd one out that you had last week. Oh God! What was that? Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, it was Schubert, Al Capone, Henry VIII, syphilis. Did one of them accuse the other of having syphilis? And the other one said, no, the symptoms are madness, and you both them! <laughs> In fact, one of them, the one on the left, had uh, boasted of uh, over 200 sexual conquests, mm. and the one on the right was suggesting that he might have caught syphilis as a result. Oh. Right. It must so be very easy in Russia. <clears throat> he looked a bit grim. <laughs> <laughs> For 200, but then perhaps he had a potato to offer. <laughs> What do you mean he had a potato? <laughs> of, uh, polar bears, they can't bear potatoes. Uh, no, 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 you're mixing it up with tomato. Uh, tomato. <laughs> you say potato, I say tomato. tomato. Mm. <laughs> you're both odd. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the Russian TV program in which Governor Nemtsov uh, goaded right winger uh, Vladimir uh, Zhirinovsky by suggesting he had contracted syphilis uh, from one of the 200 women he had boasted about sleeping with in Playboy. Nemtsov is hot favourite to succeed Boris Yeltsin and was the first to see him after Yeltsin's quintuple of heart bypass operation. Apparently he cheered him up by bursting a balloon two inches behind his head. 
uh, which uh, animated discussion leaves us uh, literally speechless uh, with uh, the situation being that neither team looks interested in establishing what you call a lead, both being content with five. Mm -hmm. So, with all the contempt that familiarity breeds, we welcome our much loathed odd one out round. Just one question per team Paul and Michael, Dolly the Sheep, <laughs> Richard Branson, <laughs> Abdullah Bukaram, and Jimmy Hill. These are new spice girls Woolly Spice, Rich Spice, <laughs> Arab Spice, and Bovine Spongy Form Spice. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jimmy Hill the only one who's got one spherical tooth? <laughs> <laughs> it, no, Dolly got shaved this week, or sheared, and her, uh, her wool was sold for charitable purposes. Mm. Uh, and she's a clone sheep. Now, Jimmy Hill shaved off his beard about three or four years ago for uh, charitable reasons. What do they do with the wool? <laughs> they made a little tiny pencil case out of it. Um, nice. Richard Branson, did he, did he shave his beard? Oh, he hasn't got a beard there, he usually has got a beard. Did he shave his beard he off for charity? Mm -hmm. um, and his legs, I think. And, he's, and he shaved his legs off. <laughs> That's more what a hat than a... Dedicated man. <laughs> Very dedicated. He was dressing up as a bride to launch a new range of virgin bridal wear. And so, so those three certainly have all been sheared or shaved for charity, so I, I don't know who the other guy is, so he's the odd one out. Yeah. Um, do you know who the uh, other one is? The Mr. Bukaram? Is he an Iranian um, Minister of Justice? Close. Uh, President of Ecuador. <laughs> is that the Actors' Union? <laughs> <laughs> he did have a beard, once upon a time. Right, and he shaved it for charity. Um, so there isn't an odd one out, is there? <laughs> yes. Oh, Branson did it for um, profit. The others did it for charity. Is the right answer. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Jimmy Hill is to receive a public apology from the brewer Scottish Courage over their Tartan Army website, which has offended him by translating We Hate Jimmy Hill, He's a Puff, into 32 languages, a clearly, <laughs> a clearly nonsensical allegation, our lawyers would like us to emphasise. Uh, someone in the Far East uh, even emailed them the Chinese version, which is Women Buxuan Jimmy Hill, Tashi Yike Poof, Tashi Yike Poof. <laughs> You'd think Chris Patton would have better things to do, really, but... Uh, Do you want to know more about Mr. Abdullah Bukaram? No. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't want to know it. Well, well, well I'm going to tell you. Well, when this bit comes on, I'll turn the telly off. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go, la, 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 I can't hear you, I can't hear you. <laughs> you can't make me know this. <laughs> Is this what you were like at school? <laughs> I can imagine the metalwork class. No wonder you didn't CSE, get the uh, CSE ungraded. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent work. Um, right, well, you better start shouting now, because uh, here we go. Mr. Abdul... Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Back up. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Return... Da, 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 da. <laughs> This is like being at home with my two year old. Mike, just let me say it. I don't know. No, I can't. I'd like to hear Martin do it. Uh, <laughs> right, I hope. Mr. Abdallah. Da, 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 da. Da. Fair enough. What about Michael? What about someone on your side? Ah. Yes, I'd like to hear Michael. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Mr. Abdallah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I thought you were in. Yeah, I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> let's throw water at him out of our glasses. That never happened. Did it? <laughs> I think that's, I think you should read that out. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what would happen if I did? <laughs> Ian and Martin, your strange group of misfits are Barbara Cartland, <laughs> Alan Bean, Ernest Foster and Wallace and Gromit. 
Oh, I didn't see. There's a huge bloke in the window. Um, the only thing I can actually sort of see between three of them is that three of them are actually going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he could be going, I don't know. And we wouldn't know. Was that, was that clever? Yes. <laughs> this Barbara Cartland's foundation, is that, is that actually moon rock she uses? <laughs> The answer of They've all been to the moon. Wallace and Gromit, in one of their adventures, went to the moon oh, yes. and found mm. it was made of cheese. Mr. Bean has gone to the moon, obviously. There's a photo mm -hmm. of him there. Barbara Cartland originally came from the moon. <laughs> <laughs> and she married into an Earth family. And they were both <laughs> delighted. Well, Wallace and Gromit said they went to the moon, but that was made up. Yes. Oh, come on, they're children watching. <laughs> what class to see. You uh, bastard. It's, yeah. <laughs> it revolves around uh, Ernest Foster. Do you know who Ernest, Ernest Foster is? No, Ernest, Ernest Foster. Foster. <laughs> During the war, he saved a baby by uh, putting his gun down and racing across the square during a shootout between the Germans and the English and picked up the baby, and the baby is now um, a postman. <laughs> so... <laughs> what a lovely story. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Give us another clue, <laughs> like Mr. the answer. Uh, the answer is, I have to tell you, that all of them have been refused permission to have streets named after them. Uh, except for Ernest Foster, whose name was immortalised in Italy last weekend in the Piazza Ernest Foster. Oh, that's <laughs> nice, isn't it? That's, that's a lovely story. story. Yes, uh, in Suio, in near Naples. In fact, you've probably been there to see some Piero de Francesca paintings on your way to Hong Kong. <laughs> your bitterness knows no bounds. <laughs> The odd excursion abroad and Angus is consumed with hatred. Mm. No, I hated you before. Uh. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's the answer. Uh, Apollo 12 astronaut uh, Alan Bean was uh, going to have a road named after him in Exeter until residents objected to the idea of living somewhere called Bean Road, in particular Mr and Mrs Heinz at number 57. <laughs> Uh, in Bristol, uh, street naming plans have been thwarted by Wallace and Gromit's enemies on the local council. Uh, the fact is, the names aren't relevant to the locality, said a penguin with a rubber glove on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, mindless gassing marks the end of this short burst, and the position is that they're still uh, absolutely on the level, having, as they do, eight each. Our final round is the last one of the evening, as anyone who watches regularly or speaks English will know. Uh, a handful of headlines wrenched from their articles, including some or fewer from this week's guest publication, The Indispensable Hot Dip Galvanising. <laughs> so stand by for... Blair, I want to forge what? New links. No, not a... Is it my question? birth certificate and call myself Sissy Fairfax? <laughs> Um, new Europe. New Europe is the right answer, yes, very good. Uh, next, uh, what has a new face? The uh, Johnson Super Furnace. <laughs> uh, Hot no. Dip Metal is about to have a new face. Uh, well, I'll give you one for that, yes. Hot Dip Galvanising is, in fact, the answer. Uh, next, what tops the charts? Uh, crime figures. Spice Girls, Matt Monroe, Don Number one. Beers. No, it is in fact top of the poet charts. Oh, it's oh. Betjeman. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's Kipling. Uh, it's still not. It's Church Bell Poem by Betjeman. Oh, those lovely church bells. I wish they would wish me well. I'm going to go play tennis with my friend Dennis. Look at that tower. It's got lovely architecture. <laughs> Went off a bit towards the end. Yeah, he was losing interest. Yeah. Yeah. It was a deathbed poem. Yeah. They couldn't think of anything to rhyme with ah. Yeah, it is in fact Wordsworth. Next, what turned off by gnomes? Gas supply to the southeast. <laughs> they found this big tap. <laughs> Homeowners. No. House buyers is the right answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a survey revealing the top ten turn-offs include mirrors on bedroom ceilings, brown bathroom suites, and doorbells that play green sleeves. Apparently. <laughs> Thank God mine plays Agadoo. <laughs> uh, next, no. big is beautiful sums up what? Fat people politely. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no. Sums up new um, hot dip drop forge galvanising method. <laughs> drop forge. New Bessemer converter. You seem to know a lot about this. I did metal work. Oh, you so did, yes. I know, the, I know the theory, I just wasn't any good at the practice. <laughs> you didn't have a Bessemer converter in your home, did you? I had, I had to make one for homework. <laughs> They're about as big as this studio, aren't they? You don't tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Galvanizers Association Galvanizing Awards. Uh, last year's top award going to a staircase in Edinburgh. <laughs> Next, what goes blue in cooler? Queen Mother. <laughs> <laughs> if you put her in the fridge, she votes Conservative. <laughs> Right. Uh, no, uh, Kit Kat is the answer, in mm. fact. Uh, you what, get the paper the doesn't end. go blue, though, does it? Uh, it's the wrapper that goes blue. And finally, what in cheese roll? Elaine Page. <laughs> <laughs> roll spell wrong, that should be R-O-L-E. It's, it's E-Dam, the musical. <laughs> and she's singing poor on the wax. Yeah, uh, it is, in fact, uh, 18 Hurt. Is the answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this is the cheese rolling contest where they yes. had a double Gloucester which rolled down the hill and knocked down 27 people. Well, it's gone up. It was 18. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> 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 Only 18 were hurt. The other nine were severely contest. embarrassed. <laughs> Uh, which guessing games blow the final whistle on tonight's session of injury time? And the end result <laughs> is that this week's bloomers are Ian and Martin with 10, whilst this week's smarty pants are Paul and Michael with 11. Yeah. So, the best of British to our winners, uh, the best of Parkinson to our losers. <laughs> But uh, before we let Look, any we of them... We haven't even bought it, it's a library book. 